Hey, what's up everybody? Angry K9 here, back again with another episode of the Unnamed LP, and today, over here in the end farm, on the lower level underneath all the Endermen, and making a few changes over here. I've started working on a small storage area over here, because I've noticed Ryzen keeps a chest over here with some stuff in it. So uh, I thought I'd build this storage area down here so uh, people would have a place to store stuff if they want to. And I've also taken out all of the TNT stuff that we had in here. Uh, if you remember uh, a few of my videos, uh, I think it was video number 40, I installed a little system down here that you could use to blow up Enderman. <laughs> but uh, that turned out to be pretty dangerous. Apparently there was an incident on the server here not too long ago where somebody who shall remain nameless blew a hole somewhere in the farm over here, at least in the fence. And uh, So I decided that I'm going to go ahead and take all that TNT out and make some changes down here, put something else in that would be a lot more useful than the TNT thing. It was fun, but it's just too dangerous to have around. So what I've decided to do is I am going to put hoppers under all these half slabs over here, and you can see that Enderman keeps glitching through there. Uh, all the Endermen are standing on top of these half slabs, so i got to be very careful not to break any of these out. But I'm going to put hoppers over here all the way down, and I'm going to have them lead into a couple of chests here. I'm going to have it set up so that these chests, there's going to be two of them here that will hold Ender Pearls, and when they're full, and when the hoppers behind them are full, the extra pearls that come down are going to work their way over through a hopper chain down into a dropper and be automatically ejected out into space. <laughs> so yeah, you might know or you might not know that if you put half slabs over top of hoppers, the hoppers will still pick items up. So that's uh, the concept that we're going to use here when we're up here beating on Enderman and the Ender pearls are falling. They're going to land on the half slabs and work their way down into the hoppers and over into the chests. And I'm doing this based on something that Tilly had told me about how she doesn't like having to run around and pick up pearls. I don't particularly like it either. And I had seen something in one of Odd Socks videos where uh, he had filled up his entire inventory with random objects so that he didn't end up picking up a bunch of pearls either. So I thought maybe if I put these hoppers in here and had some kind of automatic collection system, it might make it easier on everybody. And uh, the uh, automatic disposal system was an afterthought, but turned out to be pretty cool. So yeah, first thing I need to do is determine where I'm going to put these chests. So I want to put them right under these two blocks here. So I think right here is where they're going to need to go. And put those right there just like that. And I'm going to need to take out, I think it's this half slab. And let's see here. I believe... All nine of these are going to need to come out. And I'm going to take out this block, this block, and that block. Okay, I'm going to take one of these blocks here and put it out here. Because I need to put the dropper out there, and I don't have it with me. It's in this chest over here. There we go. So I'm going to put this dropper over here, and I need it facing out. Just like that, I can jump over, and I'm going to put another block in over top of it, just like that, and the hopper pointing into it, just like that. Okay, so now I'm going to have a hopper pointing into that chest, and pointing into that chest, and I'm going to need one, this one's actually going to need to point that way, but just for right now, I'm going to have it pointing directly into that hopper just so that I can get the other ones in place. Let me grab some half slabs over here. Oh, I have some already. Okay. I need to knock these out so I can get up there. And why did I do that? I don't know. Let me stack these up. Ah, too many. Back up there. Jump, jump, jump. Okay, I don't think I need to jump anymore. I want this hopper pointing right into that one, just like that. Okay, so put that half slab back in there. Now, what I can do is I can have all the other hoppers that are going to be under these half slabs pointing in a way that leads them all to this hopper here. So I'm going to have this one here, and this whole chain is pointing just like this. 
Okay, and then I think I'm going to have all these. Let's see here. I guess I'll just have all these point into that one there. And all these pointing into that one, and that one down there pointing into the last one, just like this. And it doesn't really matter which way these go, as long as the ultimate result is that they all get to this hopper up here in the corner, so that they can drop down through here. Now, I'm going to take this hopper out in just a second. Well, right now, actually, and it's going to probably drop into the chest here, so we'll get it back out. And I need to put the hopper here, pointing into that one. And then the hopper pointing into the top of that one, and it helps to hit the right key, just like that. And then the line hoppers up from that hopper right to there, just like that. And a couple of hoppers left, which is beautiful. Okay, now the idea here is when you're up there hitting the Enderman, and they're dropping their ender pearls. All those pearls are going to work their way down into these hoppers and flow down the chain to get to this one here. And they will flow all the way down to the bottom and fill up this first chest on the bottom. When that chest is full, this hopper will start collecting pearls and it will fill up. And when it's full, it will stop collecting pearls and then the pearls will move into this chest. And then when this second chest is full, they will collect in this hopper here, and when this hopper is full, any other pearls that come down will follow this hopper chain down here into this dropper, where they will be automatically disposed of. And I'm going to put the redstone circuit in place here. I need a comparator coming out of that dropper. Then I need a redstone repeater right there, and another one over here pointing right into that block. Then I need redstone all the way around, just like that. And that actually does need to be in subtract mode. That was an accident, but it's going to need to be like that anyway. So now when anything hits that dropper, it should drop out into space. Let me see. Do I have anything? Yeah, we'll put a couple of bits of dirt in there. So now the way this should work is if anything hits these hoppers here, it should go into that bottom chest. So I'm going to start way back here, drop some dirt in there, and it should flow through these hoppers and on down, and it should end up right in this bottom chest right here. And as you can see, it is showing up, and there's eight. All right, so now anything that hits this part of the chain when these two chests and these two hoppers are full, it should flow over to here and hit that dropper, and then the dropper should automatically dispose of it. So we'll go ahead and put that dirt right here. And this thing should start ticking away. Six, seven, and eight. And there we go. So now that dropper should be empty. And so should all those hoppers. So we are good. That looks like that's going to work just fine. And now... I can fill up these chests here. I've got a bunch of ender pearls down here somewhere. Um, and I can fill up those chests. And uh, we can check this thing out. So I'm going to go ahead and fill these chests up with all these ender pearls. And uh, I'm also going to fill those hoppers up right there. And I will be back as soon as I have all this done. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, I got those chests all full, both of them, all the way up. Got both of these hoppers full, and I put a door in the last one here so that I had some pearls here to check out. Now, in theory, I should be able to put these pearls anywhere in this hopper chain up here, up to this hopper right here, uh, well, that one up there in the corner, I should say, and they should work their way down, and since both of these chests and hoppers are full, Every single one of these pearls should work their way over this chain down into that dropper and out into the void. So I'm going to go back over here in the corner again. This time I'm going to start right there. And I'm going to put 16, 17, and 18 pearls in there. We'll walk over here and this thing should start clicking any second. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Well, 19, but I kind of got a late start there. But as you can see, it does seem to be working. So that dropper should be empty. And both of these chests should still be full of ender pearls. 
and this hopper should be full, and this one should be full, and I still have a door there. So yeah, it looks like this is working just fine. So that is awesome. What I'm going to do, uh, probably off camera, is I'm going to enclose all of this, put some walls up around here, um, and maybe, maybe I'll take these fence posts here out or something. And I don't know, maybe I'll throw a couple of furnaces or a workbench or something down there. Just try to utilize the space so that we don't have any negative space or uh, unusable space, wasted space, I guess you could say. I might even just bring a wall out and just have it meet up right here and just leave this open for whatever reason. I don't know. Maybe it'll be a special little hidden room that nobody knows about but me. <laughs> so, yeah, that's working out pretty well. So, awesome. There is something else I want to do here, and that is going to require a lot of work. <laughs> um, the system that we have in place now, and I think I already have some uh, a couple of blocks knocked out up here so I can take a look. Uh, this Enderman farm is based on Panda 4994's design, um, and he does have a tutorial on his channel as well as Doc M who also made a tutorial for this, and it doesn't look like, oh yeah, I do, okay. And basically, you can see here that we have, you can't really see it, but there is string right there, if you can see it, and it runs all the way across to that tripwire hook there between these two tripwire hooks. And what will happen is an enderman will spawn on these blocks here and trip the tripwire, and it will cause all of these pistons to push out, which will push the enderman down and he will hit those vines, and it looks like there's a couple of vines missing there. <laughs> Just like that. And that will reset their fall so that they fall 40 blocks. That way they won't die on impact, although some still do. But what happens sometimes is these pistons will push out, and an enderman will, I don't know, he'll fall and get caught in them, or another one will spawn or something like that and just glitch right through them. And he'll be standing behind the pistons, keeping them extended, uh, keeping the trip wire uh, tripped, and the pistons won't retract. And that will cause this entire section of spawn pad to be non-spawnable space. And that will negatively affect the efficiency of this thing. And you just heard the pistons fire there. So what I've done is, in a creative world, I've redesigned this whole thing. Um, I'm not going to say that it's an original design because I'm sure somebody somewhere has probably already done it. So I didn't really come up with anything new. Um, I just decided to use a different mechanism for pushing Enderman off. Now it is possible that we will still probably have some of these pistons get stuck out. But the way I've got it done is I've gonna have, I'm going to have pressure plates on each area where these Endermen can spawn, and when they spawn on the pressure plate, that will cause a, a redstone torch to light up, which will turn, or actually it'll turn one off. I'm going to have a redstone torch behind it, and there's going to be another block over that with a redstone torch on it, and the pistons are going to be over the redstone torch, and all these pistons are going to need to be turned into sticky pistons so that I can put blocks on them. And uh, that way, hopefully, it will, if it does get stuck, it will only be one piston as opposed to all 13 on one side. So that will hopefully not reduce the efficiency as much as it will if one of these rows gets stuck. Unfortunately, to do this, it's going to require that I tear down this entire thing all the way down to the vines there and then rebuild it all the way back up. Now, this is only 10 spawn layers high, and the original tutorial called for 20 spawn layers, but when we first built this, it worked well enough for the four people that were on the server, so we didn't really think that we needed to go beyond 10 layers. But now that we have more members on the server, this thing gets used a lot more, and we finally decided we're going to go ahead and extend it all the way up. And we can't go over level 128, so I'll have to keep an eye on that. And I need to watch what I'm doing. I'm about to fall here. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording, and I'm going to tear all of this down. And when I come back, it's going to be all gone from all the way up there, all the way down here. And I'm going to put 
some dirt or some netherrack or something, extend the platform all the way out before I do that so that any of these uh, pistons that fall down here, I'll be able to catch them any of that redstone. I don't care about the trip wires, or the trip wire hooks or the string or anything. That can fall. It doesn't matter because I'm not going to need it. Um, but I am going to need to keep the pistons, and I want to keep as much of the redstone, even though I'm not really going to need the redstone. I've already got all the materials I need to build this, with exception of all the pistons. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get started on that. And I will be right back as soon as it's done. Whee! Splash! And I will build the first spawning layer, show you what I'm talking about. And then I will do the rest of it off camera. So stick around. I'll be back. And we will get started. Okay, guys. I've got it all torn down. No more Enderman farm. All we got is a drop zone. No Enderman. Just some vines. And no place to spawn. I've got plenty of torches up here to keep them from spawning. So what I need to do is just completely wrap this thing with cobblestone all the way around here. This is at the base of the first spawning level. And I need to take a look at something real quick. Uh, let's see here. I've got a screenshot on my other monitor that tells me where I need to put stuff, what I need to do with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is line this cobblestone here with these pressure plates all the way down. 26 of them. 13 on either side. Click, 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 click. Boy, that's annoying. <laughs> and on the back of it, I need to knock some of these torches out of here. So they're going to be in the way. Now, I did not invent this pusher mechanism. I'm sure it's probably been used a lot by a lot of people in a lot of different places. So I'm never going to say that I invented anything because... Because of the size of the Minecraft community, I can almost guarantee you that anything I can come with, come up with, somebody probably already has. So, now that I've got those pressure plates in place, say that five times fast, <laughs> um, I'm going to put these redstone torches on the back of the cobblestone all the way down. And, of course, there are 13 on either side. Now, in my creative world where I designed this, I did it 15 wide, but it can be as wide as you want. You can make it 13 wide, 15 wide, 20 wide, however wide you want to make it. So once you have those redstone torches in place, what I need to do now is put some more cobblestone on top of those torches, just like that. So line that all the way down. And this is going to be fully enclosed, unlike the old style where it was open. This is going to be fully enclosed all the way around. So I'm going to Close off the ends here, put some redstone, or I'm sorry, cobblestone right there, and then put another block there, and this sticks out just like this. Make sure I don't go over the edge, because I don't want to fall. And also in my creative world where I put this together, I had glass going up one side, but I'm not going to do that here, even though it won't affect the spawn. Um, if I do put glass in there, it, they'll still spawn. Uh, the light level here is pretty much constant unless you have torches around. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to place a couple of blocks there, and I'm going to build the ladder back up again as I go so that I have a way up and down. So, now as you can see, these are the pads where the Endermen will spawn, and they will spawn on pressure plates. So they will spawn here, and then I'm going to have more redstone torches on the back of these blocks all the way down and as you can see when I place these torches up here they go off and that is because since this signal is active it will invert the signal and turn those torches off and we're going to do the same thing on this side all the way down here and those should go off as well and that takes care of both of those sides so now we have most of that in place now what I'm going to do is right over those redstone torches, I need to put the pistons on. And this is going to be a little tricky if I can do this just right. So I need to put the pistons facing just like that. And as you can see, when I stand on a pressure plate, it's going to knock the piston out. 
So we're going to put pistons all the way down, and they'll probably fire when I get off the pressure plate. And this is kind of tricky to do. I am holding down the sneak key or the shift key. Actually, in my case, I've got it mapped to the control. And it's not really necessary, though, because I... Well, I guess I could fall off that edge, huh? Okay, and let's try this here. If I can do that just right. All right, there we go. And I could probably just do it up here. That way I won't keep tripping the <laughs> pistons. Make it easier, right? I just need to make sure they're all pointing inward just like this. And I'm going to do... 20 layers exactly like this. And I should have plenty of materials to do it, although I may run out of ladders. But I've got a lot of extra wood. So, now, Enderman will spawn on these pressure plates, and that will cause the pistons to fire. And you're probably thinking, well, you've got the pistons too far back, and they're not going to push the Enderman. Well, that's true and not true, because I'm going to have blocks in front of those pistons, just like this. And then when an Enderman spawns in one of those pressure plates, it's going to fire that piston. That piston is going to push that block out. And that's why I needed sticky pistons here so that it would pull the blocks back. Now, it is possible that some of these could still get stuck in the extended position. You know, with it being a multiplayer server and everything, it's very possible that it could still happen. But... Unlike the old design, if one of these do get stuck, it's just going to be one piston. And it's not going to be the entire row. So that's not going to cause all of these spawn pads to be unusable. It might knock one or two out, but it's not going to knock them all out like the old design did. So I think that's going to increase the efficiency of this thing. Uh, hopefully it will, at least. And uh, that will be better. So I'm going to go ahead and build this wall up. And then, on top of those blocks, I have more blocks. But I bet you knew that, didn't you? <laughs> and these walls are going to be built up all the way. Like I said, this is going to be fully enclosed, unlike the old one. Um, and I think it's... Well, it, it really doesn't matter. You probably don't have to enclose it fully. But it's just my choice, my preference. So that's what I'm going to do. But I am going to leave the pistons and everything exposed. They don't really have to be enclosed. And I think this thing is eh, fairly resource friendly. Uh, the pistons are the hardest thing to make because they take so many materials. Redstone and iron and a lot of wood to make the pistons. So as you can see from the pressure plate up here, those are three blocks high, and that's what Enderman need to spawn. Now, this does not have to be smooth stone. I just did that there uh, just, just for my own reference to show where the, the pushers are, um, to show which blocks will come out. But you can do it all in cobblestone or whatever material you want all the way down. Just don't use dirt or anything that an Enderman can pick up, such as uh, dirt, um, what else, soul sand, I think they can take. Um, I'm not really sure. But uh, just don't use anything that they can pick up, and you'll be all right. So now, let's see here. After we've got that in place, uh, well, another thing I want to do, since I am leaving those pistons exposed, I'm going to lay half slabs on top of them, just like this. And this will prevent Enderman from being able to spawn on top of these pistons. I'm assuming that they can spawn on pistons. I don't know for sure, but better safe than sorry. So that way they won't spawn outside of the trap. They will only spawn inside the trap. And that will keep them from spawning there. And what did I do here? I did... Oh, okay, I see. I forgot some blocks here. Doop, doop, just like that. I did it on the other side, too. Well, it doesn't really matter. But, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put them in there. Just for consistency's sake. I was going to leave these corners exposed like this, but it's all right. No big deal. Let me see here. Ow! Go ahead and put that there. Actually, you know what? I, I don't think I need to do that. In fact, I'm not going to do that. But I will leave those corner blocks in place, just like that. And we should be good. So that is the first spawning layer. Let me put a couple more ladders in place here so that I can get back up. 
And that is the first spawning layer. And I'm going to do that all the way up to the top, uh, 20 layers, or at least as high as I can get. Right now, I'm already at Y57. I cannot build above Y128. If I do, it will seriously affect the efficiency of this thing. Um, it will really reduce it. And we don't want that. So I'm going to have to make sure I do not build above Y128. So I'm thinking I can get 20 layers in there. But I think anything over 10 will be fine. I think anything over 10 will help the efficiency. It'll be a little more efficient than what it was before. Hopefully fill up a lot faster um, after killing all the endermen. So yeah, now to start the next layer, I'm going to drop a piece of netherrack in there just real quick. Okay, but I need to make sure I take that out. And then we'll just put a block right there. And we don't want to do that. <laughs> Well, I'm going to have to fix that later. I can come back to that. But uh, put a block right there, and then just all the way down. And these cobblestone blocks are the floor of the next spawning layer. We're going to have the uh, pressure plates laying right on top of these blocks. And we'll do that on both sides, just like that. And this time I'll try not to break the block. There we go. <laughs> yes, I did kind of hit my mouse button a little hard there. And then we'll just line this up all the way down. And then this is how we start the next the next spawn layer. We'll have the uh, uh, pressure plates right here on top of this cobblestone. And we'll have the first row of redstone torches on the back of these blocks. And then we'll have the next row of blocks right there. Take that one out. And then we'll have the other redstone torches on the back of this block here. And then we will build that up just like that. We'll have the pistons right here over top of those and then half slabs on them. And we're going to do that all the way up to 20 layers or as high as I can go before I reach the 128 block build height limit. And that is all there is to it. So drop some more blocks just like that. Did I do that down there? Right. Yeah, I did. Right, right, right. Okay. We'll go over to the other side, do the same thing, just to keep it consistent. And then now I need to go down below to get some more materials. So I'm going to drop in some torches here, just temporarily, so that I can do that. I don't want to come back up here and have a whole bunch of endermen standing around waiting on me. So I'm just going to light this up for right now. That way I don't have to worry about anything spawning, because it is very difficult to build those guys in the way. <laughs> Very difficult. So, that's all there is to the spawn layer. So I'm going to head down to the bottom. See if I can hit that hole. I've been trying to aim right for the hole. Oh, so close. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to head down here and collect a bunch of materials that I need to build the spawn layers. If I can get in there. And, uh, once I have this thing done, I'll come back. We'll take a quick look at it. We'll tear down the dirt platform. And then we will test it out. So stay tuned. I'll be back. A couple of seconds for you. Probably a couple of hours for me. So stick around, guys. All right. So I've got this back up to 10 layers. And I'm just capping the top off here temporarily with half slabs to prevent anything from spawning up here. And uh, what I'm going to do is work on the rest of this off camera. Just like I did most of it. Um. But yeah, I've got it back up to 10 layers, and I need to get down oh, about 5 layers, because I've got some netherrack in the way here, and I'm not quite sure where I need to bust through. Try right there. Nope, that wasn't it. A couple of layers down, it looks like, so we're going to go ahead and drop down here. I'm going to knock all that netherrack out of there. And I just had that in there, so if I happen to hit one of those piston pushers, I would not fall very far. I had it down at the bottom of the drop zone as well, and took it all back out as I moved on. So I'm back up to 10 layers now. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is layer 6, 7, 8, and 10. I think I actually may have gone one too high. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, I'm going to take it on up to 20 layers anyway. But I just wanted to go ahead and run down to the bottom here and check this thing out just to make sure it is at least the same as it was before since we're at the 
the same number of layers. Jump back up here, and uh, well, that stuff will despawn. It won't affect you. You can see we've already got some spawns down there, and Endermen are being pushed into the drop zone. What do we do out here? Nope, don't go down there. Thank you. All right, run back up here real quick. I'm gonna take a look at something to make sure that I got all the half slabs in place because I don't want anything spawning up here. We should be good. Yeah, we're all right. So yeah, everything's covered in half slabs for now. When I come back later to finish this off, I'll put the next ten layers in. Right now I'm at Y94, uh, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get another ten layers in or not. Uh, I probably should be able to. I should have just enough room to do it, and it shouldn't be a problem with the efficiency. So yeah, I'm going to drop back down to the bottom, start beating up some Endermen here. I still have quite a few materials left over for the next 10. And as these Endermen were dropping, they were stealing these dirt blocks right through the cobblestone. <laughs> Didn't know that they could do that through a wall, but uh, seemed to be able to. So before I head to the bottom, I'm going to knock all this out here real quick. I don't really care about all this another rack, all these torches. I've got plenty of them. So I want to take all of this out. And then I'm going to get down there. Sounds like we got one hanging around inside here, doesn't it? Not sure why it does. Shouldn't be any. Hey, 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 cut that out. <laughs> Shouldn't be any Enderman hanging around up here. Uh, maybe it's just the noise they're making as they fall by. But yeah, as far as I know, they shouldn't be hanging around up there. There shouldn't be anything holding them up. Uh, I have seen them sometimes get stuck on the vines, but that's only if it's a one wide gap there. So it shouldn't be a problem. I'll just drop through here. Ooh, I need to go down and pick up my shovel. Hi, guys. So yeah, as you can see, it's uh, spawning at least as many as normal. They are just as noisy as ever. Finally, so let me turn the volume down here, and let me turn off that HUD, because I know that's annoying. Where did I put... Okay, I gotta get my shovel. I'm gonna have my shovel ready for when I get back there and knock all that dirt out of there. Uh, but for now, I'm going to go ahead and drop off all these materials, and I want to get to this a little bit later on. About it right now. Put the pistons right here. Just making sure everything is consistent. Put this right there so I know where everything is when I come back to work. That way I don't get lost. <laughs> so, eat a couple of melons here to get my hunger back up. Maybe grab another stack out of the chest over there in a bit. But what I want to do here is I want to run through and knock all these guys out and see how quickly. This trap fills back up at 10 levels, just like it was before. I don't know if you've seen it on my videos or in anyone else's videos, but we could hit, hit these guys. And we could usually clear the trap out fairly quickly. It didn't take long to fill back up, but this should be pretty much the same as it was right now, since we are at the same number of spawn areas, spawn levels, and so far it looks like it is. So we should be okay. Pearl collection system is doing its thing. So yeah, hopefully when uh, I get the other 10 layers done, it won't stop as quickly as it does here. But as of right now, it's pretty much the same as it was before. I've got to put a couple of blocks back in over there because I knocked them out. So let me do that really fast. And that should take care of this first part of it. And... Uh, it didn't take all that long. It looked like, hmm, I'm going to say about two hours. It only took about two hours to put those ten layers in, so that's not too bad. That's not too bad, man. I should have plenty of materials to do the rest of them. As long as I have at least four stacks of sticky pistons. Yeah, I'm good. I've got plenty. That should do it. No problem at all. 
I made this redstone, so I'm going to put this together in some redstone blocks. Probably leave some of it here, but I'll worry about that later. <laughs> These hoppers, this button, the dispensers, the repeater, the strip wire hooks, this redstone. It's not going to be anything that I'm going to need anymore, so do something with that. These slime balls I don't need. So I'm going to need those. And I'm going to need the smooth stone and the cobblestone and the half slabs. Yeah, I think other than that we should be alright. I should have plenty of ladders now, so I should be good on that. So I can take some of this wood back to my base with me. And uh, yeah, we should be alright. So, that should just about do it for this episode. Uh, like I said, I'm going to finish the rest of the 10 layers off camera. And, uh, sometime in a later episode, we'll come back and take a look at it. And uh, compare the results with 20 level levels, or as many levels as I can get in, uh, before I hit the 128 build height, to what we have now at 10 levels, and see if it works any better, if the efficiency is any better. I'm going to come down here and take a look at this little storage area that I completed. If you remember early in the video, I had started, I was working on this. So just kind of close it in a little bit, through some chests in here. And uh, we have the hoppers running along top here, going into these chests. And as you can see, it works pretty well. Picked up a few things from uh, some of that another wreck that I knocked out. I need some pearls here, so I'll keep some. And that one should be empty. Put this door here so that we can get back in. And I did this because, you know, Tilly hates pearls. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much why I put this in here. Something she said doesn't like collecting pearls, so I figured I'd set something up so that she doesn't have to collect pearls anymore. So, there you go, Tilly, just for you. <laughs> Alright, guys, so that'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe to my channel if you are not a subscriber. My name is Angry Canine, and I will see you next time.